I welcome all the participants who are registered. Thank you very much for registering in such good numbers. This webinar is uh, primarily aimed at uh, school teachers and school administrators. And I'm very happy that uh, there has been a good response. So let me move on to the topic. The topic is the new emerging nicotine menace, which most of us may not be aware. It is called the e-cigarettes and the vaping problem. So I'm going to spend some time explaining the whole process. And at the end of the seminar, you should be able to uh, understand and be aware of what is happening around us. Now, before that, let me talk something about Mirago. We are a health service company using advanced technology to deliver health management. We use data intelligence and artificial intelligence with a certain amount of machine learning to process uh, various medical queries that come our way. And our basic goal is to make our whole system patient-centric and the patient is the center of our universe, so to say. Now, this is the third lecture in the student health program. We had a mental health lecture and a primary care lecture some time ago. Those who attended it will remember. And this is third of the series, which I'm going to deliver. And the student health program is a program helped to develop and nurture student health and bring about positivity amongst the various student community. You can always contact us in the uh, web page and the email mentioned below. Now, let me tell you something about myself. I'm Dr. Uday Kumar Maya. I'm a radiation oncologist of 30 years of experience. And I'm into uh, med tech space these days. I have uh, done a whole lot of work in solid tumor management. I'm also a PhD guide in oncology. And I enjoy my teaching to my students and my respected teachers like right now. Now let me talk about the topic of today. The whole program will be divided into four sections. One is uh, to make you aware of what the problem is about vaping and e-cigarettes. If you're aware, very well, maybe I'll give you some more information. If you are not, my intention is to educate you and bring up to speed about what the problem is. At the next part of the lecture, I'll be talking about the anatomy and the functioning of vapors so that you understand it better, so that you can deliver a good amount of care to your wards, to your students. Then I will be talking about what is the problem? Why is everybody talking about it and saying that it's a medical problem? So I will give you some idea and the medical uh, information about what that problem is. And lastly, is a million dollar question. What can you do about it as teachers, as administrators, and as responsible citizens and of parents of children? You should be able to, by the end of the lecture, get an idea as to what you can do about it. That's the purpose of the seminar. And I will proceed along on these lines. Now, talking about e-cigarettes, this is not an old phenomenon. Smoking has been an old phenomenon. And to a great extent, we have done a whole lot of legislation and rules and brought about certain regulations. So we, as of now, had a good check. And uh, for those of you who don't know, the last 20 years, the incidence of smoking has come down because of relentless pressure from everybody, from teachers, from doctors, from health administrators and, and the government initiatives. So smoking has come down. But now today, it looks like the whole thing is going to be unpacked into a new form. Since 2008, 2010, a new, new menace has uh, attacked our society. This is called the e-cigarette use. And all the good work we have done with smoking control is threatening to be undone. So we have a problem at our hands. We always have this issue that why did not anybody tell this earlier? We could have done something. If it's early enough, the red flags are there. We ought to do something about it. Now, let me step to the important question. What is an e-cigarette? For those of you who don't know, this is not a cigarette where you actually physically burn the uh, tobacco and the paper and smoke. This is a battery-powered device. And the substance which people inhale is called an e-liquid. 
which sits in a cartridge. Because of the heat, the liquid in the cartridge gets vaporized and becomes an aerosol. And this aerosol is inhaled by the user. There's a variety of names. We call it vapes. We call it vaporizers. We call it vape pens. There are a whole lot of popular brands available in the market. I shall not glorify it by mentioning its name, but they exist nonetheless. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes. And medically, we call this whole system as ENDS, e -N -D -S, which is a short form for electronic nicotine delivery systems. All right. So in the lecture, sometimes I may use vapes and uh, e-cigarettes and ends interchangeably. Please bear with me. Now let me talk to you about the various devices which are available in the market today. You'll be astounded to know the kind of range of devices which are available. One which looks like an ordinary cigarette to various shapes and sizes. The whole idea is to make it attractive to the younger generation. And the younger generation always is looking for something new to show off, to share, and the social media, everybody is uh, displaying all these kind of things so that they get a spirit of one-upmanship and satisfy their peer pressure. The whole generation of e-cigarettes you can see has evolved, starting from a very simple uh, cigarette, like a disposable e-cigarette, to a cigarette with a pre-filled uh, or refillable cartridge. There are tanks and there are refillable mods, they call it. And there is also something called uh, uh, um, a pre just like, you know, you fill ink in a pen. Okay. So you take whatever flavor you want, fill it in your tank and then start smoking about it. So as you go on, New generation after generation, substances are available today for us to use. Now, let me come to the anatomy. I call this the anatomy of a e-cigarette. And I'll spend some time on this particular slide. There are some three, four components I want you to draw your attention. This is the cartridge. This is where all the substances which a person wants to inhale is loaded or refilled. This is the heating element or otherwise called the atomizer. And the whole heating element is charged by this rechargeable battery. So basically it's a battery driven device which heats the atomizer and the atomizer in turn heats up this cartridge and creates what is called an aerosol which the people inhale. Now what are the various components of this particular cartridge? It's very interesting. There is propylene glycol, there is glycerol, and of course, nicotine, the whole idea is to have a nicotine kick. All the others are just a window dressing. And to mask the flavor of nicotine, we have flavorings. I will come to it a little later. And a whole lot of other substances. And of course, this is the device material for heating. Remember, fiberglass contains asbestos and so on. Solder joints contain lead. So what happens is this combination, this and this, is together heated. Once you heat, once you reach a critical temperature, you get what is called an aerosol. Now, what is contained in the aerosol? What you can see is what all is there in the e-liquids are there in the aerosol, the same propylene glycol, the glycerol, the nicotine, etc., etc. But what I want you to do is to pay attention to This, this last component here, this is called the new components which are not there here. What are these? Propylene oxide, acetaldehyde, formaldehyde, acetamide. There is copper, nickel, silver, nanoparticles, microparticles. Now, where did this come from? This was not there in the e-liquid, nor was it there in any of these materials. This is a product of combustion. The heat and the e-liquid together has given you new components. And these are the problem makers. Acetaldehyde, formaldehyde are known toxins to the body and they can promote cancer, they can promote tissue damage. So this is very important for us to know how we are cooking up new substances when we heat up the cartridge with a rechargeable battery. I hope uh, all of you are aware as to what I am talking about and how dangerous it can be. Now let me go a little much into uh, details of the e-liquid. 
the e-liquid is a combination or a cocktail of various substances. The predominant component is nicotine. And uh, nicotine has various strengths. I'll talk about a little later. There are flavoring agents. The flavoring agents basically is to make the whole substance look palatable. At the same time, mask the harsh flavor of nicotine. I talked about propylene glycol some time ago. Propylene glycol is a humectant. That means that it retains moisture and it creates an aerosol. The smoky kind of thing what you get when you drag on it, that is caused by propylene glycol. Now, many of the e-cigarette proponents say that all these substances are approved perhaps for oral consumption. So where is the problem? But ladies and gentlemen, we are not eating all of these. We are smoking these. And no medical authority in the world has approved this for inhalation. Now, this fine line of consumption has been exploited by the tobacco industry. And we have to wake up to this particular fact. Now, let, let me talk about nicotine. And that is the biggest driver of trouble for us. Most of the ends or most of the vapors have a high nicotine content than cigarettes. Some of them go to the extent of even 7%. And you will be shocked to know one cartridge has enough nicotine as a pack of 20 cigarettes. So if somebody smokes two or three cartridges a day, he has virtually smoked 60 cigarettes. Now, the difference between cigarettes and a cartridge is that there is no paper burn, there is no carbon. But the amount of nicotine is inhaled is, is humongous. Nicotine is highly addictive. And this component of tobacco makes the youth who use it more susceptible, more addictive, and they will graduate very slowly to cigarettes. And if it stops there, that is somewhat better, but it doesn't stop there. It goes to other kinds of substance abuse. Now, when compared to adults, there's a special problem we have with nicotine as far as children and adolescents are concerned. There is an adverse impact of nicotine on brain development leading to a whole lot of memory problems and concentration problems. And if you have students who are not doing well today, for all you know, nicotine addiction may be the reason why they're not doing too well today. So keep that in mind. Now let me come to the next component of the cocktail, the flavors, as we call it. Just look at the picture. It looks so attractive for anybody. There are bright colors, the fruits, they're all healthy elements, right? Everybody says fruits are very healthy. So what's wrong? And the color is attractive for children. What the flavors do basically is they reduce the harshness of nicotine so that you don't have, when you inhale such high quantities of nicotine, the throat and the lungs may get irritated. And to mask that particular harshness, a whole lot of flavors are used. They also say that they, the use of flavors make the uh, vapors more pleasurable. And of course, children are always attracted to bright things, colorful things and things they can show off. If somebody has a pineapple, tomorrow somebody else will come and says, look, I have a papaya. It's like a stamp collection maybe, or picture collection maybe. They try to get one-upmanship on each other. And the most distressing thing is there is something called aldehydes, like vanilla and cinnamon, which are fantastic as far as oral consumption is concerned. But these aldehydes, when heated, can become acetones and formaldehyde, which is poison for the lungs. Now, this is another interesting picture of a e-liquid. Look at the top portion of the picture. They look absolutely fabulous. You have a various colorful elements and good pictures, melons and pineapples and grapes and what have you. But if you strip down the packing and if you look inside, what do you see? You see nicotine, you see glycerin, you see glycol and flavors form a very small component of it. And some even go to the extent of loading cannabis into it. We have tetrahydrocannabis also, cannabis also introduced into this. And as we know, marijuana or cannabis is highly addictive and destructive, especially for younger children. You'll be surprised to know there are about 16,000 unique flavors that are available in the market today. And all of that basically is to make it appealing to the children. Get them hooked on. That is the bottom line. Get them hooked on so that they start using it, they start trying new flavors, and basically start lining the pocket of the manufacturers. Now, this is my favorite slide. I use it very often. And uh, let me say, all of us like coffee, right? 
So you look at the gray element on the uh, on your um, uh, right hand, left hand side. It says coffee slash tea. They have at least seven flavors in that. They have cafe latte, they have cappuccino, they have coffee, espresso tea. Okay, now children like dessert, children like candies. Let me move to the candy section. That's on the top corner at about 10 o'clock. There is gum, there is gummy bears, there is cotton candy, there is bubble gum. You see, this is the spectrum. This forms 16,000 elements. And even if a child uses one per week, you can imagine the kind of uh, addiction the child may develop. This is how they rope in the young, innocent children into their system. Now, let me talk about, like I said earlier, let me talk about what are the problems. Okay, what happens if you inhale a little bit of vanilla? What happens if you inhale a little bit of uh, nicotine? Okay, somebody might say, okay, I'm not taking paper, I'm not taking cigars, I'm not taking carbon. But that high amount of nicotine can be dangerous and I will tell you how. Children and adolescents who use vapors are more than twice as likely to use conventional cigarettes. What it means is somebody starts off on vaping, the chances of them developing uh, an addiction for cigarettes are almost double. This concern basically comes from the drastic increase in children using vapors. And one data in the US shows that almost 28% of high schoolers in the USA are using vapors. So if I put two, two, two and two together, children who use vapors, ultimately you land up with a 55% of a children's population who may use cigarettes or they may even graduate to something even more dangerous. So this is how vaping, even though sounds very innocent, opens the door for much bigger problems. Now, you might say, okay, what are we doing about it? Let us talk about our area, the Southeast uh, Asia region. There is there is a whole lot of regulations which are uh, uh, available. And India has been very, very, very stringent in terms of uh, getting the sales, the production, the manufacture, the import, export, transport, distribution, and storage. You name it, India has banned all of that. But in spite of that, today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very sorry to say, today in Delhi or Bangalore or Bombay, School children know where to get their vapors, where to get their nicotine shots, where to get their flavoring agents. And there are enough people doing it on the slide. There'll be a raid. Some people will be raided. Ultimately, next day, everything is back to normal. Cigarettes to a great extent, cigars to a great extent. Over a span of years, like I said earlier, we've managed to control its distribution and sale. We have made no progress at all as far as vapors are concerned. So let me give you some international statistics. E-cigarettes commonly used among youth in the US, then they are more likely than adults to use an e-cigarette. Middle schoolers, 4.9 to 5%, and these are old statistics. I'm sure it's higher now. And high schoolers, 21% are using vapors. Okay, so that is US. Now, what happens in India? The one paper, now it's very, very uh, poor statistics available today, but one authoritative paper says almost 2.8 to 4% of uh, use of e-cigarettes in ado adolescents are present in India. And almost all of them are in the age group between 14 to 17, and they are not aware that these systems are banned in India. They are blissfully unaware, and nobody has brought it to their notice, and they believe that they are doing something which is absolutely acceptable. And more than not aware that it's banned, they're not even aware that it is harmful. And like I said earlier, because of peer pressure and because of the show-off factor, almost all of them exhibit their e-cigarettes and their various vapors as a fashion activity. Children do that very often. And uh, this is fueling. This is a win-win situation for the tobacco industry by promoting it. Now, let me talk about the various problems that we have with the use of uh, vaping. See, the tobacco industry has pushed vapors as a safer alternative to conventional cigarettes. They say that, look, you people are saying cigarettes are bad. Okay, fine. People who are addicted maybe can go to uh, using vaping. That is the way of pushing nic nicotine in some other form. And they say that it is less harmful when compared to tobacco. All right? That's not true because the amount of nicotine which is available today has such a bad 
effect on the cardiovascular, that is the heart and the blood vessels. And if in case they are abused very constantly, a person who vapes may land up with a bad heart attack, otherwise medically called myocardial infarction. It may because you're inhaling a whole lot of substances, fluids, glycol, glycerin, acetone, acetaldehyde, you have you will develop a child who uses it may develop asthma. You add to the toxicity of uh, pollution in Delhi, add to the toxicity of uh, traffic um, pollution in Bangalore, for example. Along with that, this will make an ordinary person asthmatic. And if a person is asthmatic, it will make his asthma worse. Therefore, it's a downhill slope, a slippery slope. If you're not having, don't see the red signals now, one can never recover from it. In medical terms, this lung damage, we call it COPD or otherwise called chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which is a one-way street. Believe me, ladies and gentlemen, once somebody develops COPD, we try to control it. We cannot cure it because the damage to the lungs has already taken place. Now, recent data in the US, in one of the hospitals, they have detected similar presentations in children in almost 3,000 cases. And to their surprise, they found 60 deaths. And after doing a little bit of detective work, they attribute it directly to, uh, to vapors. This is one of the first studies which has shown the damage vapors cause in children. So much so today, they have given it a name. They call it Evali. Evali, in short, is for e-cigarettes or vaping associated lung injury. So this is something which is a classical case of what the eye does not see, the mind does not know. We all have children coming to hospitals in our casualties with lung problems. We attribute it to pollution. We attribute it to a viral infection. But if you notice a trend in a particular school or in a particular population, if the doctors dig in a little deeper, we will be able to come to know that at least some of them are because of uh, e-cigarettes. And I'm not making this whole story up. The American Heart Association has released a poster in the promotion which says vaping is toxic, vaping is addictive, and vaping is unsafe. I don't know how bigger a message anybody can give to highlight how bad the whole situation is. Now, the Truth Initiative has come out of the statement, and which is very, very touching. What they say is the cigarette sales have fallen. I've told you kind of uh, pressure the governments and various organizations are putting. Yes, it's a known fact, uh, tobacco sales have fallen. Now, tobacco companies are used to making a whole lot of money sponsoring uh, various events and uh, promoting various events and lining their pockets ultimately. Now, what happened is because they've taken a hit, through the back door, virtually, they've introduced this concept of e-cigarettes and vapors. Their bottom line is to keep their business going and make their profits. Okay, So they hooked on a totally new generation to nicotine through a different mechanism. I can tell you emphatically, we, you as teachers, we as me as doctors and my community and the general public, we should not and we cannot let this happen. Now, what are the challenges we have? It's very nice to say it causes problems. It's very nice to say we should ban it. But there are challenges. You see, many of the situations are not as easy as we talk about. Now, what vaping does, it subverts the tobacco control laws. Now, a person caught, caught, smoke, caught smoking somewhere within 100 yards of a school, at least in Bangalore, the police can ban or arrest that person because it's in the vicinity of the school and number two because it's smoking in public. That is the kind of law the police have, but they have nothing as far as vapors are concerned. All right. So whatever good we have achieved by way of tobacco control is undermined by vaping. Now, legislation and regulatory mechanisms, you've taken a great deal of time to have some kind of a tangible mechanism for tobacco and smoking. We are yet to come to something very concrete in terms of uh, vaping and this changing characteristic, the political will is not there or it's too premature for the present scenario to do anything about it. Whatever normalization we brought with banning of smoking, vaping seems to renormalize it and bring back the whole system like it was in the 50s and 60s. And the most distressing fact, in my opinion, is that children and adolescents are hooked on to this. It was not such a problem. Smoking was so much not a problem with children, but with vaping, 
It is very, very rampant. Starts off with a simple strawberry smoke, ends up with a nicotine smoke, and that is a point of no return. And subsequently go for various other substances. And you won't believe it. Today, the social media, according to at least this paper, and this is in 2016, in the Facebook and Instagram, there are a lot of e-cigarette ads. Now, there is no legislation about that. You cannot put advertisements on cigarettes and alcohol, but e-cigarettes, the whole system is so very porous, people can get away with advertising e-cigarettes. And that is the first thing we should do. And stop this particular adverse advertising to con children because children are always hooked onto social media. Now, this statistic should scare anybody. In 2015, let's say in Europe, the kind of market which was there for ENDS or vaping, by 2025, you can see in Europe and America, it has gone straight through the roof. And we are not very far behind, ladies and gentlemen. Where are we? We are also showing a trend in Asia and by sheer numbers, even though the percentages may be high in the US, but by sheer numbers, I'm sure we'll match the US numbers because our populations are high. Therefore, this is very, very distressing. And all this while I've been telling you what the problem is, what the e-cigarettes are. Now, I will ask you a million dollar question. What can you do? What can I do? What can we do? Right? All what I said is available. All I have said is uh, uh, known facts, perhaps. But what can we do? Okay. Now, one of the best things we can do, and especially you, as counselors, as teachers, as well-wishers of students, we have moral education classes, we have social education classes. We need, I think, to engage in a very meaningful conversation about e-cigarettes use. Proactively, I think teachers should very innocently bring about this new concept called e-cigarettes. Are you people aware of it? Are you people aware of the dangers? We should share to the students that a good child, a good student does not vape, does not smoke, does not drink. And if it does that, it is bad for his performance. All right? And we should also say, most students who want to vape or who got into it have got into it because of certain peer pressure groups and not because they want to do it and they would perhaps want to quit. So bring about a positive note when you talk to children. We should also acknowledge, instead of getting angry or upset, we should acknowledge that the kind of pressures children are subjected today and see if there are ways and means to encourage them to reach out. Reach out to students, families, friends, educators. And therefore, the bottom line here is to encourage the student to quit. Any bad habit, we should be in a great position to help them to quit. More than, okay, this is for somebody who has gotten into trouble. Now, what about proactive measures we take to prevent? As, as schools, I think we should have programs incorporating e-cigarette education into the school, school curriculum. For that matter, any addictive substance, we should have some kind of a curriculum in a very, very student-friendly manner so that the children are aware and a bright student is aware of the problems will not step into it because children today are very intelligent. These programs can provide children with, children with information. We can say what are the risks, what are the harms, and the children can make up their mind and you can help them make up, make up their mind. All right. There are something called refusal skills. A counselor in your school will be able to say, there is something you can say no very boldly. The problem is today, children find it difficult to say no to peer pressure, all right? So we should teach our children or enable our children to say no in a manner which doesn't hurt at the same time assertive enough for somebody who's trying to convert this person to a habit to, habit, to a habit former, all right? And you can enable that as teachers. You can say refusal skills, there is no shame in saying no, and there is no shame in um, uh, say about conforming to or idiotic peer group, which is dragging you to something bad, all right? And sometimes what happens is children do that because they have nothing much to do. So drag them into coping mechanisms, for example, stress, stress reduction mechanisms, for example, techniques of exercise, sport, general knowledge, quiz, get the child to think big, do mindful practices, and not to while away the time in the dark corridors of the back alley of the school. 
these are some of the steps you can take to prevent this problem. Some these are all the cardinal rules of uh, counseling. You should be supportive to a child. Always be supportive. The child may be mischievous. You know how to handle a mischievous child. You are supportive. You find out what the cause for the mischief is and you support the child. Do not punish the child. Do not individualize the child. Do not shame the child in others. This is counterproductive because you are making the child go deeper into the morass of whatever you are trying to prevent. And there are people who are trying to quit. They are lost. They know they are doing bad. They know they are coughing. They know they are not concentrating. Instead of shaming them or scolding them, call them aside. Try to bring them back on track. Children are extremely sensitive to good words and children look up to teachers. They believe that the teachers are their mentors and a good word from a teacher. Because my children, when I when my children when they went to school, they said, I like my class teacher. She is a mentor to me. And if I want something done, if I inform the class teacher, the class teacher puts it across to the whole school and children accept what the teachers say better than what the parents say. That is the power you have over the children. Get them hooked on hobbies. Get them hooked on activities. Our imaginative teacher can do all this and make that particular batch, that particular school stand out. So one of the examples are music, exercise, sport, and this helps the child to have an all-round development instead of slipping into something bad. These are some of the activities which uh, the American Heart Association has put up. Get children to be aware of what's happening in terms of the bad world outside. Vaping is obviously one of the things. Avoid sweet um, uh, drinks, carbonated drinks, processed sugars. Then you can have some kind of fun fact, some kind of quiz. Tell them the importance of good sleep. Tell them the importance of exercise. You can also package the whole thing with eating veggies and fruits. There are so many fun activities you can do. And the child will appreciate what you are saying. And not only will the child get improved, the child's siblings also will get improved because the child goes home and talks about all these activities at home. Now, fighting tobacco use is truly a team effort. I am part of it as a medical person. You are part of it as a school administrator or teacher and the general public because all of us are parents, brothers, sisters to somebody who may need help. And we have come very far, no doubt, but we have a lot more progress to make. This is not my statement. This is from WHO. I come to virtually the end of my talk. The children, they say, are our future. And if you want to save our future, we need to save our children. Because today, they are children. Tomorrow, they are responsible citizens of our world. And if our citizen base is shaky, ladies and gentlemen, there is no future for the world or for our country. Now, I have come to the end of my talk. I do not want to um, dwell too much into this. My whole purpose was to bring about awareness, to educate you, and to give you wide pointers as to how you can help. I'll be very happy to take questions after the seminar, after this webinar is over. And I have taken material from various sources. The American Heart Association I have used liberally. CDC, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, they have a wonderful website, has all the information. And there are a whole lot of uh, organizations uh, which are there, which uh, help in taking care of uh, uh, this particular problem and handling it. We should not make the same mistake we did with tobacco and cigarettes. We woke up a little too late and we landed up with problems. Now we have enough expertise and we have enough red flags. We should not do the same mistake what we did there. So I would say mentally to all of you, no vaping should be your buzzword today. All right? Okay. Now with this... Uh, uh, what I will do now is to throw open the uh, uh, whole uh, webinar for questions. I'm sure all of you have plenty of questions. There are three options you have in front of you. You can either chat with me on the Zoom or you can go to the Q&A section and post your questions. And uh, those of you who believe that they need to talk, you can uh, wave out and I will see if I can pick up uh, that particular uh, uh, wave and then... Uh, uh, I can answer the question. And if there are too many questions, please bear with me. I will take it one after another. Uh, so this is the plan, all right? So, uh, and please uh, bear with me if in case I don't take a question right away uh, because uh, there may be a whole lot of other, other things I need to handle, but I'll try my best to do the best I can. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, 
the floor is open. Now let me see uh, if I can answer some of your questions. Thank you very much for your attention. This is basically a lecture directed towards teachers. If I have to talk to the students, I wouldn't be saying all this because I don't want to scare anybody or, or do something or educate them about these bad habits, right? But as teachers, you should be aware, all right? All right. Uh, there's a question from Mr. Santosh who says, is vaping more harmful than hookah smoking? See, hookah, once again, is nothing but a flavoring and steam inhaled, all right? Now, by itself, it will not be too much because uh, it is, there is no nicotine involved. But what happens is one graduates in the hookah bars to nicotine also because after some time it gets boring and they want a kick. So nicotine is added. And also some of these flavorings can be bad. Like I said, vanilla has aldehydes. Aldehydes when heated become formaldehyde. Formaldehyde when involved becomes a lung toxin. Yes. So hookah smoking may not be as bad as nicotine smoking, which may not be as bad as cigarette smoking, but nonetheless, it's bad. Okay, now uh, there's a question from Rohini Tapa. What if we know a child uses e-cigarettes, but he denies it in front of us? Children definitely will deny it. So it depends on how you handle the situation. You know the child is using it. And absolutely pointless asking the child in front of the class, look, you are, easy, you are using a vapor. Tell me now. The child will definitely say, no, ma'am, I will not. On the other hand, ask the child, say, I gave you an assignment yesterday. I want to talk to you about the assignment. Will you stay back? When the child stays back, talk about the assignment for 10 minutes. Then talk about the e-cigarettes. He says, look, I didn't want to ask this in front of your class, but I have known that you're using this. Do you know, my dear, what problems you're causing for yourself? These are the problems. You want to end up as an asthmatic? You can't do a 100 meters dash when all your friends are running. You're taking double the time. You've climbed four st stairs or steps and you're gasping for breath. Do you want, this is what you want to be? Don't do that. The child will understand it. And that's what I would have done if I was in your place. Okay, now there's another question here which says, uh, what social or psychological factors contribute to vaping appeal in children? And how do you address them? See, basically, a intelligent, smart child knows what is good or what is bad. And the child has one point agenda, go to school, study, achieve something in life. Because that is the kind of training the parents and teachers are given. But unfortunately, all children are not the same. It's like a Gaussian curve. There are extremely good children, the extremely bad children in terms of education. And there is a mix. Now, there is always outliers who are looking for some kind of um, activity to do on the side and there are enough seniors in any school who are looking for these outliers. All right. So these are the people you need to watch out for. Number one, make sure the elder students do not bully the younger students into going into these habits and make sure that the younger students don't become prey to this particular group. So it's a very delicate balance and if all of you are teachers in various schools so you know exactly what the social scenario is. Okay, there's another question here. It says, even if the child accepts on vaping but convinces us by saying that it is only flavored thing and not harmful, how can I explain to them that the chemical reaction, etc.? Yes. Why do you think I gave you this lecture, Sangeeta? I gave you the lecture so that you are aware. See, like I told you, the, what the mind does not know, the eye does not see. If you are not sure of what it is, you will never be able to give the answer to the child. But on the other hand, you say, look, they may be innocent. But what happens when you cook something? A whole lot of other things happen. And these are meant for oral use, perhaps. These are meant for flavorings, for external use, perhaps. These are not meant for smoking. This will go into your lungs and cause damage to your lungs. It's very simple. Any child will understand that. And you also can say that today it is this. Tomorrow it's another flavoring. Day after tomorrow it is nicotine flavoring. Do you want that? Do you want to be a smoker at 12? Do you want to be addressed as a lung problem at 12? The child will definitely understand it. Okay. Uh, Vasudha says, what kind of program should I have in my school to create awareness about vaping? So I don't think you should have something specifically for vaping, Vasudha. What you should have 
is some once in a week or so you should have an open house i believe that's the best thing and tell children to come up with interesting stories spend most of the time with that then toss in a simple thing like do you know about colored veggie how good they are for health do you know how bad carbonated drinks and uh, uh, processed um, sugars are bad for health and do you know that there is something called vaping children i hope you are aware of it some of your seniors may be doing it boy this is very bad and i have read a whole lot of articles as to how it causes lung problems graduate to some other topic keep a fermentation combination of this in the open house and the children will know my teacher has talked about vaping and vaping is bad so tomorrow if one of these seniors come and say hey look this is fun oh the boy will definitely because he knows about it the boy or the girl definitely will say no 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 i know this is bad and walks away all right so there are very imaginative ways of doing it get them to draw about the benefits of uh, veggies perhaps get them to draw about the benefits of exercise and toss in this vaping question don't be very specific to vaping because the child will feel that you're pushing something down their throat make it a general well being class and maybe you can add some kind of a contest also some kind of a quiz use your imagination i'm sure children you've been handling children for years so you know how to do this very well better than me in fact uh some more questions okay do you inform the parents immediately when you see a student vaping how do you approach this sensitive topic with parents oh i know this is a very sensitive problem and i had an interaction with a parent recently this lady he belongs to a little bit of a high society and she was traveling abroad for some business and apparently her son came to her and told her that look mama you, i want you to get me a vapor which is available in singapore or dubai or somewhere this lady was shocked she said what are you talking my son how can you ask for this he said everybody in our school vapes then this lady was shocked as what are your teachers doing about it no our teachers have said it's bad but i want it because i know you are going abroad it seems my friend's father bought it in dubai why don't you get it? this lady was perplexed she said what do i do then she realized that if she doesn't get it this guy will go and do something on the side and she checked and she said okay there are vapors with just flavors there are vapors with nicotine i will ask my son to use the vapors with flavors only anyway when compared to doing something bad at least i have control over the situation this is the kind of dilemma parents are facing today so when you have a student who is you know is vaping of course you will have to inform the parent but at the same time ask the parent to be kind and gentle and handle this very carefully or at least say that give me a month's time let me see if i can change the child before you do anything pretend that you don't know be aware and then get them into confidence because once you know it is not right for you to hide it from the parent but then you need to talk to the parents also and very soon i may be giving a a talk on the similar topic addressed to parents and uh, uh, insurance segments etc so you have to handle it differently then all right but parents can get agitated you will have to tell them how to handle the situation and tell them this is not so uncommon there are many children who are doing it and there are ways and means of handling it all right any more questions anybody else interested in asking questions yes mr bala would like to ask a question thank you bala would like to know from the teachers in the audience about their experience or observations of students into vaping in their schools now if uh, from the student teachers can put in a word or sentence or maybe want to talk most welcome because i i, I have assumed that this is a problem which all school schools face uh, the students the teachers turn around and say no nothing like this happens in my school i'll be very happy but at least i've educated you tomorrow you know what to look out for but if you do have a problem we would like to know what kind of uh, uh, statistics there are if you want to share it you can share it by email to if you don't want to uh, want to have your privacy but we would like to know about it what is the situation in your schools many people say okay cigarettes the problem is with the paper with the carbon with the burning tobacco on the other hand vapors don't have carbon don't have burning tobacco all right 
So I'm coming to this question, which uh, says, can vaping cause cancer? So when there is no carbon, hydrocarbons, how can vaping cause cancer is a question. Yes, when compared to an actual burning tobacco in paper, etc., which is highly, highly uh, carcinogenic, vapors may not be so. But we have a different ball game in vapors. There may, no burn, there may not be burning paper, but the various agents cook the aldehydes, the acetones, the propyl glycol into formaldehyde. Do you know what causes cirrhosis of the liver when somebody drinks? The formaldehyde which is happening, which is synthesized, the breakdown of the alcohol causes cirrhosis. Can you imagine a robust organ like the liver gets damaged because of formaldehyde and acetaldehyde? Can you imagine what happens to the not so robust lung? Just imagine. Therefore, they may not cause cancer in the true sense of the word when compared to a cigarette, but definitely they cause cancer uh, in the lungs, etc. But we do not have statistics. The history of smoking with cigarettes, etc., from 1940s, 30s, we have enough data. E cigarettes are something recent, but if I put two and two together, by 2025, 2030, we'll have an explosion. And then I don't want people to turn around and say, why did not anybody tell me? I'm telling you now. Okay, while we all know that the sale of vapes and cigarettes are banned, they're being openly sold in the market. Oh, this, is, uh, this question, my friend, is a government regulation question. Uh, the government is very lax on this for the same reason. I think I need to talk at the government level to say that vaping is as bad as cigarettes. The uh, cigarette sales, etc., are so regulated and so much in under control. Unfortunately, the uh, vaping uh, devices are not. And there are a whole lot in bigger cities, especially. Thankfully, vaping is not so much of a problem in uh, second tier cities and villages. I don't know when it is going to catch up. But in the bigger cities like Delhi, Bombay, Calcutta, Bangalore, there are hookah shops, there are tobacco shops. And these guys, after knowing that this person requires a vapor, very surreptitiously digs down into one of his drawers and brings it out. And there have been raids. I have read enough articles about raids, about a lot of these substances seized, but next day they're back into business. So the sustained effort by the government and the police agencies and a sustained effort by us, general public, teachers, doctors, to sensitize the authorities is the need of the hour. I know it is difficult, but nothing comes easy. Especially when it comes to the health of our children, I think we should take every uh, possible mechanism to address it. Okay, we have a question from uh, Jyoti here. When government is very particular about the health of its citizens, why don't they put a ban on these things? Oh, they have banned it. I showed you a slide. India is one of the biggest, uh, as far as legislation is concerned, from the production to the distribution to the sale, everything is banned. But you see, the problem is there is no will. The ban by itself is not good enough if it is not executed. And today, most authorities have say they say that they have bigger fish to fry, they have bigger problems to handle, and they are not equating smoking to vaping. And that is the problem. And that's where we need to step in Jyoti and sensitize people and say this is as bad or worse when compared to cigarettes. And even though it may not be as bad in terms of real terms, the person who vapes tomorrow can become a smoker or he smokes something else and it's going to be a downhill thing. So we need to provide statistics. We need to talk to people. I from medical fraternity, I have a whole lot of lung specialists and doctors who are doing this. I'm also doing this very actively as teachers. I think you also should do actively. Okay, are there any more questions? I hope uh, all of you liked what I said. I hope the message was good. I hope the message is not too harsh. And uh, I'd be very happy if you turn around and say, there's no problem in your school, but I think we're fooling ourselves. Every school today, especially in uh, the metros, have this problem. Okay, uh, Bala um, tossed uh, another question at me. Is the medical community also guilty of not educating people on the ill effects of vaping as they do with smoking. Look, I'm an exception to whatever you're saying. I'm going over rooftops and saying what the problem is. A whole lot of my pulmonology colleagues are doing it. We have a whole host, a whole host of papers which we are publishing. Every day new data is emerging. 
In fact, uh, the uh, ICMR has published a white paper on the problems of uh, vaping. So I wouldn't say we're guilty or not guilty. Yes. But none of us, you see, what happens is we're not aware. Across the board, we're not aware that there's something like this exists. Okay, even if something like this is, exists, if you're aware, we're not aware how bad it is. Even if you know how bad it is, you don't know what the end results are. So a whole lot of education gap is available. And the medical community is going hammer and tongs at educating people. Okay, maybe we started off a little late, but at least we've started. Now it's the other people you need to pick up the queue and take it further. Any more questions? We are uh, we got about five minutes or ten more minutes before we wind up. I'm very happy with your interaction. I'm very happy to many people who said that they liked the session. Girisha said it's an excellent session. Thank you. She also says we've given a very good message. Madam, please looking out for this space. We've got more material coming. And we believe that we need to, the first step will be taken by us in educating people. And you can carry the good message along. All right? Okay. If there are no more questions forthcoming, are there any other questions coming? Okay. So all the participants, if you've given your email IDs, etc., we will uh, put in, uh, get, get a certificate sent to you in your email. And uh, we'll also send you some promotional material. And please look out for Marago in your future communications. We believe in educating. We believe in helping and promoting all socially relevant causes. And we're very happy that you participated in today's meeting. And you shall get all the certificates very soon. Give me about five days a week. I shall get the whole process together. And even beyond this particular webinar, if you believe that you have something to share with me, you're most welcome to send an email and I can respond. If in case I have answers to that particular query, I can give you material if you want as to what are the current trends in uh, various child-related activities. And together, we should all contribute towards making this world a much better place and making our future generation a much more brilliant generation than ours.